G'day guys, it's David again at Deer Even Game Bro. We're at PAX 2015 here in Melbourne. I'm with my good old friend, Way K Savage. You may know him from the fan film Fallout. Um, he was the director in that. Tell us, um, how's that been since then? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Uh, pretty great response for Fallout Lanius. And uh, I'm, I'm here at PAX 2015 to talk about Scourge Legacy. Yeah, so this is a game that you've been uh, created, you've created uh, sorry, it's been in the making for how long? It's been in development uh, for like two years. Two years. Yeah. And so this is what I'm getting. This is a video game, yeah. a TV show, yeah. And a toy, uh, toys, it's toy toys. Line. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So it's all three being developed at the same time, and we're here at PAX to talk about the game, because it's games. But So this is where you're, you're announcing it tonight? Yeah, we're basically debuting the first tiny bit, bit of gameplay, talking about our characters, talking about our world, talking about how the game will work. So I'm confused. You live in WA, Western Australia, yeah. the, the most, the capital's isolated city in the world, being Perth. Yeah. And you're making a video game. You got a toy line and a TV show. How is this possible? Oh, it, it, look, it's just, it's, it's something I'm in love with. I love the idea, and I think it's going to make a lot of people really happy, and it's really cool, and um, I'm going to do it no matter what. All right, well, I'm excited. Tell me about it. What is this, what's the concept? What is this game? Well, what is it like? Well, Scourge Legacy um, is about, uh, is a post-apocalyptic uh, 2D brawler. I love it already. And it's basically about these three kids that have been sucked into a uh, VR simulation, which is a very 90s idea. And the, uh, the yeah the simula the simulation basically uses your memories um, and your emotions against you, and so the game is basically uses an overworld map, and the player can choose which site to fight through a particular level, so to speak. And the level can be made up of locations or memories or or kind of weird stuff. Uh, and at the end of each level, you basically defeat a boss and get a node, and the nodes unlock new scourge creatures. Right. So these creatures, these are. I don't want to say it, but it's kind Pokemon. Pokemon. I like it though. So, so it's kind of like a. It, what? So is it? It's an RPG. Well, it's it's more more than anything. It's a brawler. It's a 2D co-op brawler. Awesome. Yeah. And so what we want it to be is is like tactical co-op. So each character has their own special attacks. Yeah. And when you're playing co-op. You got that synergy. You yeah, got that's right. When you're playing cop, they can use those attacks to kind of support one another, and uh, yeah. But it is it is straightforward as in it's a uh, it's a brawler. It's a 2D scrolling brawler, but there is uh, creature collecting mechanics involved. That sounds awesome. So. I'm loving it already. I'm kind of getting like that Scott Pilgrim kind of like you got that '90s vibe with the, with the Pokemon. This already sounds like a hit. Like, well, I hope so one day. Absolutely. Well, you got the top. Oh man. So, is there any like uh, similarities with the game and the TV? Are they going to go and sync? Well, the, the way it works is that the 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 game is kind of because it's set in this kind of VR simulation. It's its own self-contained story, so it won't affect the overall narrative of the TV show and um, the toy line. Okay, so what's coming first? Well, at this stage, we're, we're, everything's kind of like a horizontal development approach. I think there's a good chance between the game or the TV show happening first, but uh, we are running a really cool competition where you can um, win one of our toys pretty soon. Mate, this sounds amazing. I feel like you're creating a lot of work, because let's be honest, the uh, the film television industry is struggling in Australia, yeah. and there's not many Australian de game developers either. You are just wait. You know what? I'm going to do both. You're going to create a lot of jobs in this. I feel. Well, I hope so. One day we do, and then like we're doing everything really, really small. It's starting off really small, but it's a really, really big idea. So I kind of said, what's something that can affect a lot of people, make a lot of people happy, sell some cool shit, yeah. and basically get people excited? And I thought this is the idea to do it. Dude, I, I'm psyched. I'm psyched for it already. So we got. The games, the that's the sort. What about the toys? Uh, uh, tell me about that. Well, the first toy we're doing at the moment is our little mascot character, Yib. And he's kind of like our Pikachu, except covered in orange eyes and slobbery and eats everything. Is he the mascot one that is on your poster? Yeah, the little purple guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we're basically doing a lot of our marketing and stuff around him. And he's really, really cute and he's really, really funny. And uh, if you like Slimer from Ghostbusters, you'll like Yib. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. Okay, so what, because Ben, I know you as a director in film and television. What made you decide to get into games? Oh, look, I've loved games for a long time, like a lot of people have. Um, and I just thought that the next thing I do can't be, it can't be small. It needs to have a big market and a big industry. 
um, and it needs to be something that can affect a lot of people. So I thought, look, if, if we aim to make a property which is kind of aimed at younger people, but hopefully brings in their parents, then th this means we'll be doing something that has a big audience. Because in Australia, we have a big problem with creating content for the right audiences. We make beautiful, beautiful films and TV, but they're meant for very niche audiences. And we can't do that anymore. We need to aim big. So this is exciting. So when are we expecting this? Do you, have we got a release date yet? Uh, vaguely, maybe next year. Yep. Very, very vaguely. It all depends on money. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in this announcement stage. We're talking to publishers. We're talking to press. We're just getting people excited. And partly what we're doing is that we want to see what people think. So at, we're at that stage where we're kind of crowdfunding our marketing. We're saying to our audience, is this any good? Does this sound cool? Do you like the sound of it? Do you want to see more? And if that's a big yes, then we can say to investors, hey, check out what we're doing. So uh, is this, uh, what platforms are we going to find this on? It'll most likely be iOS first. And then, and then on to bigger consoles. No, oh, well that's a great market to start into. Where can we see this? Do we have a website? Well, you can, you can hit us up on Twitter, which is at Scourge Legacy, and you can search us on Facebook, which is Scourge Legacy. You can't go wrong. Dude, everyone check it out. It's pretty good. Wait, look, thank you so much, man. How you been finding PAX? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah, great. It is pretty good. You got your announcement happening 10 o'clock tonight. If you're around, guys, please come check it out. Come support this really big game. Honestly, it's going to be good. You're supporting Australian uh, work. You're supporting Australian talent. So this is something you definitely want to get behind. Wade, thank you so much. It's good to see you again, my friend. All the best. And uh, we'll see you around, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, right. Thanks, guys. Uh, that's us from uh, Devon Game Bro, and we're out.